Any questions from the audience, from the uh, current speakers? Yes. So um, I've heard a lot of wonderful things about MR. Um, we, you know, we have a great CT angiographer at our institution who's really interested and excited about working uh, with us with the lymphedema stuff. But nobody has commented about their use of CT angio or CTV and why. And, and why. It, I'm just interested in that. That's question one. And question two is, if you, have a, if you have a patient that comes to you with a history of a radical lymph node lymphadenectomy and they have lymphedema and you have ICG technology, what is the value, and you see um, evidence of dermal backflow or you know, reduced lymphatic channels concerning for, with the diagnosis of lymphedema, what is the value of getting lymphocentigraphy? Okay. So I, I, I'll take the first question on CT. So, um, so CT is still a great test. Uh, we use it all the time, you know, mostly for ER cases. Um, it does have radiation and iodinated contrast, so, um, you know, those are two things that uh, we, we like to avoid if possible. Um, we saw some, some great work by the other Alex here earlier on spec CT. Um, that resolution is a little bit different. Uh, but with MR, it, it's really documented, so superior tissue contrast, so you can see water, you can see fat, much more clear, and you can actually separate them much easier. Um, you can also get, uh, it's harder on CT to get blood pool imaging of the entire body, and we don't want to scan from, you know, neck all the way down. Um, so, so, because that would be a lot of radiation from, you know, uh, the amount of scanning that we're doing. Um, so it's really the physical properties of MRI and the fact that, you know, now it's now an hour test and not a three-hour test. It's, it's still a great question and it's still a great, great exam. And, and I think the spec CT we, we could look at further. But that, those are my reasons why. She had a question about lymphocentigraphy. I don't know if you heard the question. Can you repeat the question? Sure. So if you have a patient that's had a radical lymphadenectomy and they come to you and, they get your, and you do the ICG study and you find that the ICG study is abnormal, what is the value of getting the Yeah, So, you know, I, I don't think it's mandatory to, to get it. Um, you know, in the past, as I mentioned, I thought even if somebody had a high suspicion for lymphedema, that it would predict their clinical course or their, their um, uh, so I, I had assumed that if they had worse findings on lymphocentigraphy, for instance, four hours to get to the uh, nodes and dermal backflow, that their underlying lymphatic function was worse than someone who, whose tracer went to the nodes at two hours and had no backflow, for instance. And so I would like, I, I would, would tell the patient that their lymphatics was, was severely dysfunctional and that the clinical translation is I would tell them that they have to be very compliant with their garments and avoid uh, incidental trauma and higher risk for infection, for instance. But based on this recent study that we just did, as I mentioned, that we didn't find any correlation between the clinical severity and the study. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that, that that's no longer an indication to get this, the study. The other reason to get it in that patient, personally, as I mentioned, and I don't think it's mandatory, I uh, still like to get the study if it's someone I'm considering an operation for, for the reasons I mentioned, because I'd like to potentially follow them or um, you know, see if their lymphatic function is improved. I, pref I do a lot of liposuction, and so just like the patient I uh, showed, there's, there's I, I, liposuction actually can, in not all pay, but in, in patients improve their lymphatic function. So I've been able to follow them by getting patient, getting the study even if they had a high um, suspicion, and that was, that paper was just published yesterday. Do you, do you also do the ICG? I guess my question was, if you have a NeoPD camera and you're doing an ICG evaluation of the patient, and the ICG evaluation shows you that there is either dermal backflow or abnormal lymphatic channels, that that's where I don't understand why they're computer. I just every meeting I go to, there's this you know remark that we should absolutely get lymphocentigraphy, and it's it's not clear to me the reasoning why if you have secondary lymphedema and you have a diagnosis of it with ICG handheld, you know, uh, laser angiography, why are we still encouraging lymphocentigraphy in those cases? I think they're two different tests. I mean, I don't do the ICG, so I don't know if yeah, it doesn't. You know, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I think a lot of people also do it for purpose of uh, uh, following up the results and things like that as an outcomes. But yeah, he he doesn't do ICG. Uh, 
so. Just a quick comment, um, because we all have different practices, so, uh, and different patients, so um, we get lymphocentigraphy because if we're gonna go into, for example, a patient, I mean, I know we discussed before, but if a patient has secondary lymphedema and they had an axillary lymphadenectomy, sometimes there are still functional lymph nodes still left in that axilla. And if we're gonna do a lymph node transplant and go back in the axilla and cut out all that scar, you know, if on lymphocentigraphy we see an active lymph node, we definitely don't want to cut it out. So we'll inject filtered technetium the morning of surgery and be able to detect where that lymph node is so we don't hurt whatever is still there. Um, but the lymphocentigraphy, uh, I didn't mention, does capture the deep cyst, deeper systems. ICG, as you know, um, only penetrates the skin. You can only see about five to 10 millimeters deep. ICG is also, unlike lymphocentigraphy, where you can get at any hospital at, ordered by nuclear medicine, ICG is not standardized. It is being used off-label for lymphatic surgery, although every lymphatic surgeon, most lymphatic surgeons doing uh, working on the vessels are using it, um, and there is actually a growing pool of data. So I think as ICG matures as an imaging technology and as we have more validated studies and as it becomes on-label use and more standardized, um, it will be, it'll be clear. Uh, on that note, I do have a question uh, to Joe, and uh, I think you uh, suggest that perhaps we should use ICG kind of to survey, uh, as a surveillance in those patients who might be at high risk, just so you can, you can diagnose it quicker, and kind of like what we do with the mammogram, for example. And I think that's a great idea, except um, I have a, a just question for you and maybe from the audience as well. So a few years ago, one of my collaborators who's a lymphatic biologist uh, kind of told me that, you know, the ICGN, if you use too much, actually it, it's bad for lymphatic vessels. And uh, he just kind of said that. And uh, perhaps when we are using it to do the surgery, uh, when little amounts, because we just put like zero point less than 0 0.1 centimeter per site. But if you are doing it frequently in a person who is at a borderline of being lymph lymphedema, uh, you know, I'm wondering if you're doing it regular basis, maybe that could actually cause, you know, damage to lymphatic vessels. I mean, have you heard that or anybody else in the, in the audience? No. Yes. Yeah, that's actually based on a, a, a paper that showed very minor fluctuations. Uh, Thank you. Uh, it was based on a paper that showed very minor changes and fluctuations in, in lymphatic pumping. Yeah. And it was not permanent. It actually went away in two weeks. So it, it's not toxic, but it does, uh, it does tend to decrease pumping a tiny bit. I mean, yeah. even in the paper, it was minor. Yeah, but if you're using it regularly, like every three months, yeah. that, you they know. They did repeated measures, and it didn't do anything. Okay, no somebody, somebody behind you want to, yeah. Repeated experiments in animals with icy green, no problems. And in that paper he's referring to, there were two vessels in the tail vein of uh, mice investigated in the major vessel, no problem, only in the minor vessel. It's very, okay. very minor. Well, that's good to know. Okay. I'll also say that, um, I mean, we've been using ICG for eight years now, and the only reaction we've seen in a patient with multiple long history of allergic reactions was some mild hives that resolved with Benadryl. Um, methylene blue, on the other hand, or Peyton blue, has had na multiple, like, we've seen anaphylactic shock in multiple patients. Pretty much every year we see some, re some major reaction to methylene blue, so I think you, I think you need to be able to see something to operate on it. And you, um, I think the evidence over time so far is that it's, it's fairly safe. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, I use it all the time, so. Um, anyone else with the questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, regarding, um, again, the ICG, uh, you spoke earlier in your talk about it being sort of a burden for patients to um, have to worry about compression or have to worry about, you know, the fear of developing edema, but I think there's also a burden to patients um, to have to come in that often and worry about having it, similar to some of the public health stuff that's been done with mammograms, you know, and where they backed it down because some of the, the trauma associated with, you know, possible having a problem. Right, point, point well taken. I'm not forcing anybody to come in and have these done. But they, <laughs> they, uh, they, <laughs> that are high risk, like they have a 40 to 50% likelihood to get lymphedema, and they want to evaluate themselves. And we're, we're usually doing it about once every six months, to tell you the truth. It's not like we're telling them to come in all of the time and, and injecting them. And I think for the patient, it's something they actually appreciate. 
I only see the patients that are worried enough about lymphedema that they're seeking surgical consultation. So I have a very skewed view. There, for all the patients I see, there are a lot more patients out there that they're just fine. So um, I'm just telling you about what the patients report to us, and uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm just the messenger. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but definitely the, these uh, advances in uh, imaging has really changed how we do lymphatic surgery. And I think it's, 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 uh, it's really remarkable the, the, the advances we have made just in a short time. And I expect there are going to be a lot more changes. And this is very exciting for the field of lymphatic surgery. Mm -hmm.